Scientists and researchers have been open to the idea that our existence is a simulated reality. Scientific American recently said that there's a 50-50 chance that we're living in a simulation. Elon Musk is someone who's been vocal about this topic, and how we could find out whether we are part of a simulation. Elon was asked if an advanced civilization could create a simulation, saying the following, I thought about this a lot. I think the strongest argument for us being in a simulation is the following, that 40 years ago we had basic games, and now we have photorealistic 3D simulations with millions of people playing simultaneously, and it's getting better every year, and we also have virtual reality and augmented reality. If you assume any rate of improvement at all, then the games will become virtually indistinguishable from reality. Even if that advancement drops massively from what it is now, it still shows the incredible trajectory that we've made. So given that we're on this trajectory to have games that are virtually indistinguishable from reality, and those games could be played on any setup box or PC, and there would be billions of these computers and setup boxes, it would seem to follow that the odds that we are in a base reality is one in a billion. That seems to be what it suggests, and we should hope that that's true because otherwise if civilization stops advancing, then that may be due to some event that erases civilization. So maybe we should hope that this is a simulation, otherwise we're going to create simulations that are indistinguishable from reality, or civilization will cease to exist. That's the two options. Neil deGrasse Tyson also thinks there's a very high chance that the universe is just a simulation. He said the following, At the moment I'm waiting for someone to convince me that we're not living in a simulation, and as of right now the arguments are quite convincing to me, and most of the best arguments are traceable to a guy named Nick Bostrom, a philosopher at the University of Oxford. Here's the argument. Our computer power is rapidly growing. We create simulations of worlds. We have video games of characters that are inside the video games. Imagine a day where you can simulate a world so perfectly with humans, so well that you can recreate every single thought you've had. But now you're in a simulation in the computer, including the perception of free will. MIT researcher Rizan Verk said that they've researched the topic extensively, and said that he's looked at how long it would take humans to construct their own simulation of reality. He said the following, The truth is that there's much we simply don't understand about our reality, and I think it's more likely than not that we're in some kind of simulated universe. Now it's a much more sophisticated video game than the games we produce, just like today, World of Warcraft and Fortnite are way more sophisticated than Pac-Man or Space Invaders. I think there's a very good chance that we are in fact living in a simulation, though we can't say with 100% confidence, but there's plenty of evidence that points in that direction. He further added that we're either all AI in a simulation that's running on someone's computer, or we're playable characters, he said that conscious things that exist outside the simulation and we inhabit characters, just like he might take on the character of an elf or a dwarf in a fantasy RPG. This is a debate that's still ongoing, with researchers from both sides proposing new and exciting theories. Interestingly, not too long ago, Neuralink, a company funded by Elon Musk, that aims to put brain chips inside of people, announced that they think it's possible that they could create a novel extinct species of dinosaur, saying that it could be done within just 15 years. Max Hodak, one of its co-founders, said that he thinks they could build Jurassic Park. Max said the following, We could possibly build Jurassic Park if we wanted to. It wouldn't be genetically authentic dinosaurs, but maybe 15 years of breeding plus engineering to get super extinct novel species. Biodiversity is definitely valuable. Conservation is important and makes sense. But why do we stop there? Why don't we more intentionally try to generate novel diversity? Although dinosaurs as we know it have gone extinct, 
scientists the world over have proposed theories to bring them back. So the question on many people's mind is can we actually do this? Scientists say that theoretically yes we can. Interestingly, going back a few years ago, biologists took it upon themselves to carry out a test which would show them what a chicken and a dinosaur hybrid would look like. This is the first step in understanding how we could create a 21st century dinosaur and what that creature would look like. The scientists working on the project were able to isolate clusters of genes that aid in facial development. The team was then able to discover a way of stopping them in the chicken embryos and after doing this they were left with an animal that looked very similar to what a Velociraptor would have looked like. The lead author of the study, Bart Anjar Bala, from the University of Yale said the following, We had not set out to create a dinosaur chicken. When examining an important evolutionary transformation we wanted to find out about the underlying process. The beak is the part of the avian skeleton that had most extensively and radically diversified. We wanted to find out if the beak was functional. Not everyone has got on board with this idea though, and have said that we should leave dinosaurs in the past. Many though like the idea of bringing dinosaurs back to life, and have said they would love to see something that resembles a dinosaur be brought back to life within their lifetime. So do you think we're living in a simulation? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.